Hey there, fourth graders. This is Mrs. Smith here. Today we are doing uh, Unit 2, Lesson 7, which is on page 59 of our books. And today we're talking about the distributive property. So this isn't really a new method, but it's giving you the vocabulary for what we've already been doing. So earlier we were using, you know, the place value sections method and the expanded notation method. And you'll notice that in both of these, like one difference was you're writing the numbers inside the boxes and one is to the side of the boxes but in both cases when you're breaking up uh, say the 27 into 20 and 7 you are distributing or kind of like handing out like the word distribute means to pass out or hand out like if your teacher is passing out a bunch of watercolor paint sets to the whole class she's or he is giving one to each and every kid in the class. And so I want you, when you hear distributive, to think about like giving to each one, passing out, handing out, distributing. So that five, you are distributing to both the seven and to the 20. And that's because of the distributive property. If you only did it to the seven, and you're like 20 shmoney, I don't care about it, uh, then you'd really only be multiplying five by seven, not or five times seven, not five times twenty-seven. So to correctly multiply, you have to distribute that uh, one factor to the entire other factor, even if you've broken it up into um, different pieces. Okay, and when you do distribute it to one piece and another piece, each of those, when, once you've done the multiplication. It's not the whole product because you haven't put them together yet, so it's called a partial product or a part of a product. And then when you put them together, it's the actual product. So I hope that makes sense. We're gonna practice it, um, and I think it'll become pretty clear in a moment. Okay, so model the distributive property. You have used area models, like I just showed you, to help you multiply. You can use the area model to find three times 74 by writing 74 in expanded form and using the distributive property to find partial products. So by breaking 74 into 70 and 4 and then distributing the 3 to the 70 and to the 4, then you'll find 3 times 70 and 3 times 4 and those will each be what? Not whole products but partial products, right? And then you'll add those together and then you'll have the full product, the full answer. Um, so, and then after you find all the partial products, you can add them together to find the actual product of 3 times 74. So, we're first going to write the 74 in expanded form. So that is 70 plus 4. Then, we will use the distributive property and do the 3 times 70. So, 3 times 70 and the 3 times 4. And we're putting that in parentheses so we know to do that first before we start doing any adding because of our order of operations, right? Parentheses is like, do this first. So now we can use our area model and we can see, okay, 3 times 70 is, well, 3 times 7 is 21. So 3 times 70 is 21 tens or 210. And then we'll do the second partial product, 3 times 4, which is 12. And then we'll take our two partial products of 210 and 12, and we will add them together. So 0 plus 2, 2, 1 plus 1, 2 tens, and 2 hundreds, 2 hundreds. So the actual product of 3 times 74 is 222. Okay. So it's, it's really just exactly what we have been doing before, but now we're talking about, um, we're making sure that 3 goes out to everybody right nobody wants to be left out that's not nice <laughs> okay so now uh, on this side of the page we're talking about algebraic notation and this is just notation just means how it's written so this is just talking about a way to write all of these steps that we've done here is you put the expanded form of the number in parentheses and then like remember before we talked about it doesn't always have to be that x for multiplying so here we're using the dot to multiply and no big deal we'll have 
our one factor, the eight on that line, and then our 62 will be broken up, and then we'll have our partial products, and then we'll have our full product right there, okay? So let's talk about that. Uh, another numerical multiplication method that can be represented by an area model is the algebraic notation method. This method also decomposes, which means breaks up, right, the two-digit factor into tens and ones, right, like expanded form, then uses the distributive property. So it's very similar to what we've been doing, but rather than with the expanded notation method, it's written out um, with the partial products underneath like that. Now, I mean, it's just a little bit more streamlined. This is also probably what your parents might be more familiar with if they're doing it in this horizontal fashion. So, uh, use the algebraic notation method to solve each problem, complete the steps. So, 8 times 62. Our single digit product will go over here, or fact, yeah, single, single digit factor goes right there. 62, we're breaking up into the tens, which is 60, and the ones, which is 2. And so over here, we're going to put our single digit on that side and then our broken up factor right there, 60 and 2. And so the first thing we multiply as we're distributing is the 8 times 60. So 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 60 is 48. 10, so 480. And then 8 times 2 is 16 and then we add those up and we get 496 okay all right now let's look at uh number five if you're feeling good about this go ahead and attempt to fill this out and then hit play all right okay i'm putting my single digit factor on that side breaking up my 97 into the tens and ones so 97 and then i will Set up my equation, so 2 times 90 plus 2 times 7. I'm going to distribute my 2 to everybody, so 2 times 90 is 180, or 18 tens. 2 times 7 is 14. Adding those partial products, those pieces of the product, up to our full product, which is 194. Okay. Now, we are going to draw an area model and use the algebraic notation method to solve the problem. So, there are nine members of the school's golf team. Each golfer hit a bucket of 68 golf balls. So, each hit a bucket of 68 golf balls at the driving range. How many golf balls did the entire team hit? So, we'll draw our little model. Okay, well it goes where? We're gonna put this line here to separate our tens and our ones. We'll have our single digit factor over here, which was nine. Our other factor, 68, is equal to 60 plus what? Eight, that's right. Now we'll do our equation over here. So we're doing nine times 68, and that equals nine, parentheses times 60 plus 8. We're breaking that up over there. We'll do our 9 times 60. So what's 9 times 6? 54. So 9 times 60? 54 tens, 540. And then 9 times 8? 9 times 8? 72, good. Okay, now you'll add those up, and I'll do it over here because I need a, I need to do it in vertical form. 540 plus 72, 0 plus 2, 2, 4 plus 7, 11, and 500 plus 100, 600. So then our full product, combining our two partial products, is 612. Uh, so we did... 9 times 68 equals 12. Okay. What's the first step in the algebraic notation method? What do we do first here? 
Well, first we set up our what? Our picture, what's it called? The area model, right? Set up the area model. It's always good to make sure you're really understanding what the question is asking you. So it's always nice if you can draw a picture to draw a picture. If you're doing something online, um, make sure you have a whiteboard or a piece of paper so you can still have the option to work things out by hand. A lot of people, myself included, even though I love the computer, <laughs> I really do uh, benefit from using a whiteboard or a piece of paper to get my thoughts down. And then I can find mistakes and problems a lot easier than tracking it all in my head. Okay, so that's it for today. Join me next time for lesson eight. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See if you have an assignment. Bye-bye.